guys and welcome back to another tutorial today what we're going to be covering is inventories all the inventory blocks and basically how to use them I've created a very simple example in with this particular block it has only two inventory slots and basically what it does is converts cobblestone to stone easily so let's uh, just grab some cobblestone and we will put that in the chest here and that will siphon into the hopper which will go into the actual cobblestone press which as you can see uh, the cobblestone's going into the first slot and then it's being converted into stone which goes into the hopper and then into our chest here so with that let's hop into M Crater and we'll take a look at what's going on so the first thing that we need to do is actually take a look at the actual uh, GUI so we're going to open up the GUI and as you can see we have just a slot 0 which is our slot here and slot 1 which is our output slot now slot 0 is an input slot this uh, light or this dark blue icon right here that looks like it's pointing down that's basically the input slot uh, the red arrow pointing up is the output slot. If you hover over it, as you can see, it kind of says what it is. So input and output. So again, uh, zero is input, uh, slot one is output. So now that we know what slot numbers we have, we can actually create the block. Most of this information is not important. We just need to go to tile entity and we're going to fill out the information here so the first thing that we need to do is we need to enable block for inventory so we're going to check this box right here and that will allow the inventory the next thing that you want to do for any inventory for blocks is you're going to want to select your inventory that or your GUI that you just created so I have selected the GUI that we have in the mod the next thing you want to do is simulate the right click event so what you would want to do is open GUI on right click and then enable that for the size of your slots now your slots start at zero but technically zero is one so we have two slots we need to add the number set to two because we have two slots if you increase the slot number in your GUI then you're going to have to increase this number the stack size is how many sizes basically can stack in that particular slot so we have it set to 64 drop items from inventory when block is destroyed this is probably a good idea if you're working with blocks to be honest unless you don't want it to drop anything and then you would just uh, like when it's broken in survival or whatever and then you would just disable that enable block output comparator this basically sends a signal if a comparator is next to the block if it's depending on how full it is very similar how chests work with comparators you can test how the slot how many how full the actual inventory is so it might be useful if you don't want it you can just disable it if you want it enable it for the two last slots or the two last selections now this is a little bit more advanced but if you have say an input slot and an output slot and you don't want the output slot to be filled with your input items then you can actually disable certain slots and kind of restrict what you want done with specific things the input slot that we have is zero right so uh, disable automation and then it says taking from these slots so we don't want it to take from zero because that's our input slot now that won't affect the actual procedure that's just going to affect the hoppers from pulling the items out uh, the next thing that we want to do is with our two slots is we can also disable what gets put in so disable automation and then inserting into the slot so this basically puts it in so I've basically just reversed the numbers so zero would we don't want to be taken out of and we don't want uh, one to be put into so we have just set those particular slots now if you want to add more slots you just need to add a comma and then the number and then comma the number comma the number and you just keep repeating that until you have all your slots filled out because we're just using two slots we don't need to add commas so that's perfectly fine the way it is that's all there is for the block particular things we just need to go to the triggers add a update tick 
or any type of procedure you want to basically manipulate the inventory, you will need X, Y, and Z and the world tag. So let's hop into the procedure and I'll show you basically the blocks that we will cover today. So the first thing that we need to do is go to the block tag or block procedures and then we're going to scroll down until we see these particular options right here. So we have clear slot into the slot ID and then of block at and the coordinates if it has an inventory. So this basically will clear any items in the slot very similar to the clear command with the player's inventory. So this will work for blocks instead. So you can uh, specify what slot ID that you want to basically clear and then you can just wipe it completely clean if you want to. Then the one below it is a deal damage. I'll deal one, which is the damage. Damage to item in slot and then the ID of the slot of block at and then the coordinates if it has an inventory. So this will basically, if the, I, there's an item in it, like a tool, you can damage the item if the tool is being used. You can actually use this block here. Below that, we have get copy of item from slot and then the slot ID of block at and then coordinates if it has an inventory. Now this is usually used like this. You would basically put this in to a comparator so we would basically go to logic, grab a comparator, and then we would plop that in. And then what we would want to do is grab a Minecraft component and then select our actual type of block. So that would work just fine. You can also test if it's the same as another slot. So we can duplicate and test if it's equal to the slot one. So if slot zero is equal to slot one and obviously in our case it would not be so that's basically how that works is just getting the type of the item very similar to how you would get other items from other slots and stuff then one under it is get block of items or get number of items from slot zero of block at if it has an inventory now this one basically tests for the amount of items so as you can see here, I have used a very simple mechanism that will, if you go to logic, grab a dark blue operator, and then go to your number comparator, drop that in. Now, generally you want to use equal to or greater than unless you want to test for the exact same thing. You can test if it's the exact same thing. In our case, uh, slot one, I have tested for it. I'll explain that, how it works, but if you're it really depends on what you're doing. For example, if with our input slot, we constantly get influx of items, so we wouldn't want to test if it's equal to one. So I've basically tested if it's equal to or greater than one. And that will basically have kind of like a safety catch where it will test if there's more than one item in the particular slot. And we're already testing for what kind of blocks in the slot so that's how that'll work so to change it you just click on the equal sign and click equal to or greater than or you could test uh, if you want it to test for something under then you can do less than or equal to or less than uh, or even greater than if you want a specific number you can test if equal to if you don't want to test for make sure that it's not a specific number you can basically say that not equal to which is the cross with the equal sign so in our case we just have it to test if it's equal to or greater than one so basically what we have done with our first condition here is we're testing for the type of block then we are testing for the amount of items if it's equal to or greater than one and then what we're doing for slot zero or slot one is we're getting the number of items in the block and we're testing if it's empty. So basically if it's empty, if it has no items because the hopper would pull it out, then we would want to execute this procedure. That brings me to the last two blocks right below. Remove one item from slot zero of block at if it has an inventory. Now this will remove any item from item or block from the uh, slot that you basically specify. With the remove, you can also get a number of items. So we can actually duplicate this and remove the number and we can place that in. And that would work perfectly fine. We could actually get the 
slots, numbers from another slot, and then basically test if it's equal to that slot and then remove that amount of numbers. Um, another thing that we can do is we can just use a number, specify it, and then we can remove it from the slot. That would work as well, like, like we're showing right now. And that leaves me to the last block, which is the set one, and then the particular item in slot, and then the I slot ID of block at if it has an inventory. So basically what we've done here is we have set slot set one of stone in slot one of block at and then our location of the blocks inventory. So what we're doing in general is we're getting the if the slot has equal to or greater than one cobblestone in the input slot, we're then testing if the output slot is empty and then we're going to remove one item from slot zero, which will be our cobblestone, and then we're going to be setting the stone in our output slot, which will be pushed out by the hopper. So that's just basically how use all the different types of blocks and stuff like that in a very simple mechanics for creating things. You can use this with conjunction of logic blocks. So if you grab the light loop blue operator, you can also set it to and and you can also use or statements as well. So you can click on it and go or, and you can use these in conjunction of creating your script for what you want done with that particular block. So hopefully you guys found today's tutorial helpful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, peace out.